In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. Dear friends, let us acknowledge our sins before the Lord, our shortcomings, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you come to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of God the Father, the honor seat, to pray for each and every one of us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, Give safe what you have nurtured through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Job. One day, when the angels of God came to present themselves before the Lord, Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, Whence do you come? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From roaming the earth and patrolling it. And the Lord said to Satan, Have you noticed my servant Job? and that there is no one on earth like him, blameless and upright, fearing God and avoiding evil? But Satan answered the Lord and said, Is it for nothing that Job is God-fearing? Have you not surrounded him and his family and all that he has with you, with your protection? You have blessed the work of his hands, and his livestock are spread over the land. But now put forth your hand, and touch anything that he has, and surely he will blaspheme you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power, only do not lay a hand upon his person. So Satan went, for, went forth from the presence of the Lord. And so one day, while his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine, in the house of their eldest brother, a messenger came to Job and said, The oxen are plowing and the asses grazing behind them, and the Sabians carried them off in a raid. They put the herdsmen to the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, another came and said, Lightning has fallen from heaven and struck the sheep and their shepherds and consumed them, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, another messenger came and said, The Chal Chaldeans formed three columns, seized the camels, carried them off, and put those tending them to the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, another came and said, Your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in the house of their eldest brother, when suddenly a great wind came across the desert and smote the four corners of the house. It fell upon the young people, and they are dead, and I alone have escaped to tell you. <clears throat> then Job began to tear his cloak <clears throat> and cut off his hair. He cast himself prostrate upon the ground and said, Naked I came forth from my mother's womb, and naked shall I go back again. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be, the name, <clears throat> blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job did not sin, nor did he say anything disrespectful to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Incline your ear to me and hear my word. Incline your ear to me and hear my word. Hear, O Lord, a just suit. Attend to my outcry. Hearken to my prayer from lips without deceit. Incline your ear to me and hear my word. From you let my judgment come. Your eyes behold what is right. Though you test my heart, searching it in the night, though you try to try me with fire, you shall find no malice in me. Incline, Incline your, your ear, ear to me and, and hear my, my word. I call upon you, for you will answer me, O God. Incline your ear to me, hear my word. Show your wondrous mercies, O Savior of those who flee from their foes to refuge at your right hand. Incline, Incline your, your ear, ear to me and, and hear my word. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. An argument arose among the disciples about which of them was the greatest. Jesus realized the intention of their hearts and took a child and placed it by his side and said to them, Whoever receives this child in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. For the one who is least among you is the one who is the greatest. Then John said in reply, Master, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we try to prevent him, because he does not follow in our company. Jesus said to him, Do not prevent him, for whoever is not against you is for you. The Gospel of the Lord. The disciples argued among themselves to figure out who was the greatest among them. Who is the greatest among us? Isn't that what we are seeking for or searching for? Isn't that part of our human nature that we want to be well recognized, that we search for glory? Isn't that argument also among ourselves not just the disciples back then, but now that argument also is among us, though we may not say it, but it's still deep down in our heart. That argument is still around us. Who is the greatest among us? Jesus took a child and placed by his side and he said, whoever receives this child in my name receives me. In the ancient world, children had no positions, no privilege, no rights. They all depended on the care of their parents. By taking a child and place on his side the place of honor, the honor position, he recognizes, Jesus recognizes the child and placed the child on the position of honor. In other words, he lifted up the child from the position of nobody to become somebody. And that's by saying that but also by doing that, Jesus is showing his disciples the way to the kingdom, the way to be great, the way to be lifted up, that is to have a humble heart and humble service. 
As Jesus said, "I come to serve." The Son of Man comes to serve, not to be served. So, my dear friends, a lesson for us in our Christian living, and also if we want to be recognized, if we want to be important, perhaps in the kingdom of heaven, then to be childlike, to depend on God, and to serve one another with a humble heart, with a humble heart of service. To the God and to the people around us, what is more important, to be recognized by this world, or to be recognized by God at the moment of our death, when our guardian angel presents our soul to God, and Almighty God recognizes us, friends. That is a lesson for us: to be humble, to serve the Lord. At any cost, to do small things with great love—that's what Mother Teresa said. Not everyone could do great things and to be recognized by many, but to do small things with great love. Let us present our prayers to the Lord, asking Him to help us in our journey of faith, to do what we are commanded to do, and to serve the people around us with humble hearts. We pray for Pope Francis, our bishops, priests, and deacons, that their life, the teaching and preaching, and pastoral care, we proclaim the message of the gospel. That is to serve one another with great love. We pray to the Lord. We pray for families that, through the grace of the Lord, will draw family members together in lasting bonds of love. We pray to the Lord. We pray that those who grieve for their departed loved ones. May be consoled by the promise of God that one day they will be lifted up through the service they have done in their life. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the repose of the soul of Estelle, Gwenecki, and for our loved ones departed from this life to the next, that through the mercy of God. They, their souls will be welcomed and recognized in the kingdom of heaven. We pray to the Lord, and for all our intentions, either spoken out loud or held in the silence of our heart. We pray to the Lord, good and gracious Father. You teach us to have a humble heart, to serve you, to serve one another. Help each one of us to learn from you, as a good shepherd, as the one who humbles yourself, to serve each one of us and to lift us up. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord, the God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what is celebrated in mystery it may accomplish in power through Christ. Our Lord, the Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son Jesus Christ, your Word, through whom you made all things. Whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice. We acclaim, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest! You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts. We pray. By sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, "Take this, all of you, and eat of it." For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, "Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me." The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your Church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Myron, our Bishop, and all the clergy. 
Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, "Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done." On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy. We may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, "Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church." And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, give us safe for eternal life. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, O Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbors, through Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless all of us. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.